Hello folk, how you doing? Scotty. So I was recommended to check out this other channel. Again, it's an argument on Cuba. All right, so in the wake of these ongoing protests that are happening over in Cuba, Biden has been facing a significant degree of pressure that is coming mainly from conservatives, but also from conservative Democrats within his own party to condemn socialism and communism, even though uh, these protests that have been happening over in Cuba largely are protests for food shortages, medicine shortages. Cuba was a socialist regime through all the socialist price fixing that did create a widespread shortage Problem. It happens every single time you set down price ceilings, folk. That's what happens when socialists try to control prices. It certainly isn't capitalism. Capitalism is about leaving it down to the market and it's determined through the laws of supply and demand. And when socialists set down price ceilings, and they do it every single time, whenever an inflationary problem occurs, take for example the hurricanes that created a shortage in of itself in 2008 in Cuba, then of course, what was the government going to try and do? What was going to try and set down socialist price ceilings? They inevitably created an even greater widespread shortage problem. Mismanagement by the government as well as the embargo, there have been a huge mixed bag of protesters uh, that have been going out, but none of them really, at least not a large amount of them, have been out protesting the socialist policies of Cuba. That's just lies, folk. How does he know what percentage of folk are against socialism or who are they? I can tell you this, there are a lot of folk that are protesting against it, and a number of the Cuban people themselves come out and says that the main reason for why they're protesting isn't it just today with us of medicine shortages etc there's something a lot more than that it was today with the whole dictatorship they're getting sick and tired of it all which have led to fantastic results if you look at their healthcare system their education system compared to where they were uh, before the revolution this is just the usual propagandist nonsense folk you know all in the name of protecting the reputation the name of socialism and of course the american mainstream media buys into all that nonsense have a listen to this guy who's originally fake cuba but just have a listen to what he has to say on the healthcare and education. No, certainly they're not allowed to read these books. <laughs> I'll tell you that. My, my books are obviously banned, but so is the UN Declaration of Human Rights banned. Animal Farm is banned. Folks, I can't, can't stress it enough. It is a Stalinist Iron Curtain regime. In 1958, Cuba had 88% literacy how would you account then for well, well let, but let's say something about the health situation don't they have great free health care it's dreadful in 1958 they had a great base to work on in 1958 cuba had the 13th lowest infant mortality on earth nowadays this is a good example most of the doctors or the men who became women who became doctors who had the misfortune of being born in cuba in the 50s and 60s and got their medical degrees under Castro, when they come to the United States, escaping and otherwise, they cannot pass, they obviously have to be licensed in the US to be practiced. They cannot pass the exam in the United States to be doctors. They can barely pass the one, most of them flunk the ones to be doctor's assistants. Bottom line, most Cuban doctors, as the media and the UN and liberals call it, barely qualify as U.S. nurses. It is a complete hoax. Let me give you an example of how this works. Remember Michael Moore's Sicko, Tom? Yeah. Yeah, remember when that movie? Obviously, that was one of Castro's favorite movies. It was shown island-wide for free in Cuba, and Cuban dissidents saw that movie, and they were horrified. They were disgusted. Here we go again propaganda and the world's going to believe this like to believe the rest of the propaganda believe. and don't you know that cuban dissidents snuck little mini cameras into actual cuban hospitals not the ones that the communist party elite and tourists use but the ones that joe six-pack cuban use it not that most cubans can even afford a six-pack but the ones that the regular cubans have to go they snuck cameras into, and they snuck out films of a horrible conditions, fly infested beds without sheets, just horrible, horrible conditions. And they were gonna show it on ABC. John Stossel was gonna show it back when he was on ABC. And the show is gonna be what Michael Moore didn't show you. So going back to prior to Fidel Castro's regime, he's talking nonsense because Cuba already had a high literacy rate prior to all of that. So that proves to you 
that the cause of the high literacy rate had nothing at all to do with that of the communist regime itself. It's completely misrepresentative to say that these are massive protests against socialism in general, but on top of that, I mean, listen, Cuba or communism is a failed system. Socialism is not a good substitute. Listen, man, I mean, uh, th this is what happens when you have an embargo on a country, a stranglehold on a country for 60 years or so. And there you have it, it's the usual US embargo excuse. But to say that this was primarily the cause, again, you can check out my video that I've done on the Cuban crisis where I explain all of that. This is the problem because a US embargo is not going to stop Cuba trading with other countries. All they really care about is socialism. It's just all about protecting socialism. So let's just all blame American people. This is what the lefties always do. This is the very reason why the United States should never have got involved, should never have imposed an embargo, because all it's given these people is a platform to use excuses. But of course, we'll choose to ignore all of that because our precious socialism means more to us than the people's lives at risk. Would these people ever study why price ceilings result in price shortage problems? Would they even bother to research why that is? No, they bloody well would not. Uh, since the revolution, I mean, we have had an embargo. We currently have over 200 sanctions, many of which were slapped down by the Trump administration and continuing by the Biden administration. Biden, his policy towards Cuba is even to the right of Obama. Folk, I illustrated this in the video on Cuba and the crisis and I pointed out even a quote on the United States with regards to the sanctions and what it actually allowed. It allowed a, a basic, you know, access to that of the food, etc, etc. Who was trying to actually normalize relations with Cuba, which would be a good thing, but um, here's Joe Biden, I mean, just coming out and condemning socialism as if that's the problem with what's happening in Cuba right now. Uh, the embargo over years has cost Cuba an estimated $130 billion dollars so well he clearly has not got a clue where money comes from because money only comes from two places folk number one the private sector and number two the printing press is he trying to tell you that cuba can finance itself through that of the printing press if it's you know one dollar to every product and you print one dollar mail that's one plus debt added to the currency the mayor and mayor paper that you print in circulation the lower the valuation of your currency that's what you call inflation and when inflation drives up and you're seeing the purchasing power of your currency drive down how the hell are you supposed to afford things think about what that does to their economy and as i covered in a previous video as well the explicitly stated purpose of the embargo from the beginning when the united states first started doing this after the revolution um the united states government openly said our explicit purpose in doing this embargo and putting these sanctions on the country is to starve the Cuban people, make them suffer as much as humanly possible to facilitate the conditions necessary for an overthrow of the Cuban government. American businessmen and American people were being brutally tortured and murdered in Cuba. That's the reason why the US imposed the embargo. You're trying to make it sound as if the American government just did it for no reason. I mean, Fidel Castro was an evil man, one of the most evil dictators that's existed in this planet Earth. Wiped more than 100,000 innocent people right off the face of this planet. So that purpose exists now to this day and it's continuing, but that was the explicitly stated purpose from the US government going in from the beginning and it's still what's happening right now. So you're basically trying to make it as if the American people and as if the American government just stepped in and did it for nothing. They did it because they were killing American people. Welcome to the real world, son. Fidel Castro was an evil bastard. So uh, when Biden comes out here and pretends as if this is all due to the failures of socialism and communism, no, it's just not. And listen, I mean, you want to talk about failures of an economic system. The Whataboutery. Here it comes. Well, as adequately pointed out here by Rob, uh, capitalism is a failed system. It is subsidized by theft and murder and has completely collapsed for everyone outside of an increasingly privileged elite. That's just a load of economic illiterate nonsense. At the end of the day, when you're speaking about capitalism, you're speaking about the free market, and the only way that you can make money in a free market is basically through that of voluntary exchange. By producing something of value that the consumer is willing to pay for, that is not theft, and it most certainly is not violence. How the hell did you draw to the logical conclusion that capitalism had something to do with theft and violence? You just made that shit up? All you're doing is passing imperialism and colonialism, which are forms of collectivism, and then trying to say that this is the fault of capitalism? You ignoramus. Capitalism's an individualist system. What the hell's that got to do with collectivism? <laughs> while bringing the planet to the brink of destruction. So, absolutely right, perfect synopsis here of our dying capitalist system as we see it in front of us. So how the hell can you pass this off as a capitalist system when it's a mixed economy and you've got the strong mixture between capitalism and socialism? This is exactly what these socialists do. Let me tell you why that's illogical. In order for you to go from capitalism to communism, you have to go 
through a transitional period because nobody would ever accept the sudden loss of their freedom, they would never accept going from capitalism straight to communism. So in between there, you've got the mixed economy. You have to introduce socialism into the economy, which is why socialism was the slow and gradual period. It's the transitional period towards communism. That's why they say socialism is the goal towards communism. Hell, that was even in the words of Vladimir Lenin. And that's what you saw over a long period of time. You've seen more and more socialism into the economy. So it's a mixed economy. You're sitting there with a central banking system. Keyword, political centralization. You're sitting there with the fixing of interest rates, the fixing of the ratio of money, the absence of free market money, but he wants to have you believe that somehow you're living under some sort of capitalist system. Just a, another compulsive liar. Uh, how is it dying? Well, let's go ahead and look at just some basic facts. So this was a recent article that came out July 14th, but this is something we've known for a long time, right? Full-time minimum wage workers can't afford rent anywhere in the United States, according to a new report. And who, whose fault was that? Oh, that's right. You stripped the market of free market money, in other words, capitalist money, which was gold and silver and what did you do you used your socialism to start fixing the interest rates below the market value fix the ratio at 1 to 33 to enable large-scale borrowing and the legally protected fraud through your socialist government subsidies to protect the losses of others and most importantly as if that wasn't bloody well enough done your socialist keynesian fractional reserve banking of print 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 borrow 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 spend 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 reckless printing borrowing and spending that increased inflation soaring through the roof because of all the printing of the fiat currency for years until it was backed by the petrol dollar after the 1970s. You end up creating a problem and then you project the blame off onto capitalism. It's classic socialist mentality. You do it all the goddamn time. You're compulsive liars. Anywhere in the United States, minimum wage. So Joe Biden obviously failed to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, which- So let me get this straight. The country has just gone through a crisis. Inflation is through the roof. And we're talking about asset inflation etc. Because there's been a lack of productivity as all the lockdowns meant businesses were not open. Despite all of that and the running of the printing press and inflation soaring way out of control, you then think it's a smart idea for the government to put, impose the minimum wage. You're not fixing the problem, son. You're creating an even bigger goddamn problem. In and of itself would be a starvation wage in most places around the United States, especially in cities where most people live, but- Christ, I've heard that same crap from Nicola Sturgeon supporters, the sympathizers. Meanwhile, they go about with their new smartphones for fuck's sakes. You know, anywhere in the United States. So if you were working as a minimum wage worker, you literally are on a star starvation wage. You can't afford to live anywhere in the United States. Does this seem like a system that is providing for its people? No. Well, well, like I explained in the financial crisis of 2008, I explained that they were doing the house flipping. I also explained the entire issue of the legally protected fraud, all the inflation, etc. But the truly magical part is about these wonderful socialists. Here's the contradiction. These are the same people who were pointing to Donald Trump and saying, you're a racist. You, you're a racist. <laughs> you, you're a racist. All because the fact he was building a wall. The funny thing is, is that he clearly doesn't acknowledge the laws of supply and demand. That when you've got people flooding into the country, if the number of people flooding in is far greater than the quantity of houses available, then of course your housing costs are going to soar out of control. Well, that's just part of the reason. The artificial fixing, lowering of the, of the interest rates through the use of socialism, of course. He would try and deny that being socialism because they have to find some way to project the blame off onto capitalism, but they cannot blame capitalism because capitalism's about the market value. And that's the fact that they completely ignore. It's all the usual narcissistic personality disorder projectionism of the typical socialist. Of course not. And of course, we have a massive homelessness problem in this country as well, which uh, if you go and look up what the uh, uh, Housing and Urban Development estimates it would cost to actually completely eradicate homelessness in the United States, it's only about $20 billion. So about, you know, 3% of our yearly military budget. And yet we choose not to. Why? Uh, because it's not necessarily profitable. So, you know, again, the failures of our current economic system, capitalism. Well, again, you're telling lies 
lies because capitalism is not the early stages of corporatism and corporatism is what you're living under today. All that socialist government interventionism in the economy is how you got to the mess that you're in. You're not living under a free market. Your entire private sector, as I've pointed out so many times before, is over-regulated. How the hell can you sit there and call that a capitalist system when capitalism's an individualist system? The definition of individualism could not be clearer. It means the freedom of the market, freedom from government's interference, therefore for the market to regulate itself. That's what capitalism is. Are you honestly trying to call the United States of America a free market economy? You're a laughing stock. Another one. A UK warehouse, an Amazon warehouse, was caught destroying 130,000 unsold products a week. <laughs> <laughs> Son, I already destroyed second thought on that argument, and it turns out that it's actually government's regulation that created the problem. One of those televisions or whatever electrical good it was ends up catching fire and their house goes up in flames. The point being is because of government's regulation, Amazon can be held liable for that. I covered that in the video in response on Second Thought, which just goes to prove that you socialists are like NPCs. Again, yet another failure. Here was another one that I covered in a different video. Supreme Court sides with Nestle and Cargill in case alleging ch child slavery. So yeah, another product of our exporting of capitalism. How the hell did you draw to the logical conclusion that child slavery is something to do with capitalism? Slavery period is nothing to do with capitalism. In fact, it's an infringement upon individuals' rights. Capitalism is all about consensual agreement, whether people agree to work for a company or not. It's a whole other argument. All you've done is pointed out a title that says child slavery. That's a claim. There has to be something more to it. There has to be a story behind that. Under a capitalist system, it would rule against that sort of thing because that is an infringement upon individual rights. Yet again, another product of our global capitalist system. Amazing, right? And yet another one. 78% of workers live paycheck to paycheck, and this was before the pandemic. This was back in 2019. 78% of workers are living paycheck to paycheck. Just one medical emergency, one accident like that, that could completely ruin their lives, bankrupt them, uh, etc. So again... Again, I've covered that. The whole thing with all the inflationary problems, etc. You're driving towards a recession, not over the 2008 financial financial crisis because of all the bailouts. What the hell's that got to do with capitalism? Nothing. It's all the fault of socialism. Uh, so listen, I mean, this is a failed system. Uh, socialism, Biden, I don't even know that he could adequately even define what socialism or communism is, but this is him just feeding into the right. And the thing that I also found funny about this before I uh, end this video is that, I mean, you go look at what Fox News is saying. They're already saying this is not good enough. So the point is, listen, even from a political angle, this isn't smart. Obviously, he's wrong on the economics of it. He's wrong um, on all of that. You're 21 years old and you think that the planet who lived the real experience of socialism after decades of its failure across the entire planet Earth. Socialism failed that many times over, even failed in Venezuela when it created the food shortage crisis caused by the price ceilings, etc. But of course, we'll continue on to blame the United States of America because it's just the usual left-wing garbage. You know, this is where the right is at right now and this is where Joe Biden is at, apparently agreeing with them and feeding into these same bullshit narratives. So again, uh, socialism is obviously not just a, a completely globally failed system, especially when you uh, take into consideration that the United States can't keep its hands off and trying to invade, overthrow the governments, uh, overthrow democracies, install dictators, fund far-right death squads, and every single country that uh, tries to nationalize resources or mo move towards a more democratic uh, socialist system. So every single one of those regimes have been totalitarian and murdered tens and millions of people. You could look at Stalin's regime that murdered 20 to 60 odd million people and then Mao Zedong's regime that did the exact same and they absolutely massacred 70 odd million people. But apparently, you know, oh, it was all democratic. Well, the funny thing was, and this is the truth by the way, during the Soviet Union's honeymoon phase, your kind ran around claiming, Oh, it's so democratic. Look how wonderful our socialism is. Oh, democratic socialism. And you did the exact same thing with Albania. The same story. You were calling a dictatorship. You were basically calling a totalitarian regime democratic. That's exactly what your type, type did. Even the 1930s in the Soviet Union, 
a dictatorship, an all-out totalitarian regime, your kind were calling it democratic. And once the failure became all too noticeable, once the failure was too extreme to the point that you could no longer defend it, once the Soviet Union went from phase one, the honeymoon phase, into the second phase, the excuses and what about it, and then the third phase, which was the that's not true socialism, you know, it's every single goddamn time. That's it, an all-in-one. That is it in a nutshell. These people are just far gone. They're ignorant. They don't understand socialism. So if you want to check out my video that I did on the Cuban crisis, you can go and check that out for yourself. At the end of the day, whilst the US embargo created a problem in of itself, it most certainly was not the main problem for why Cuba was facing the problems that it did. Again, it's like I said, folk, these people are concerned more about their religious ideology, socialism, than that of people's own lives at risk. That's all that matters to them. They don't actually care. They're not actually caring about the actual people and real world solutions to problems. That's why you'll never get through to these people. Because they're cultists. Anyway folk, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Be sure to like the video, share the video and of course, uh, if you've got anything you'd like to add in, comment in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thank you for watching and I shall talk to you later. Cheers.